This is the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, their brand new middleweight adventure bike for 2023. And I think they did a great job with the styling on this bike, especially in this gray and yellow finish. But is it as good out on the road as it looks here in the studio? Well, today we'll take it out for a spin and I'll tell you exactly what I think of it. So let's start with the engine and you've got the same 776cc parallel twin that you'll also find in their GSX 8S Naked which we reviewed a few months back and also more recently the GSX 8R middleweight sports bike. Now it doesn't have a great amount of top end rush this engine and if you compare it on the spec sheet to the closest competitor which has to be the Honda Transalp then it is quite a few horsepower down at the top. But, in my opinion, it more than makes up for it with this really smooth and pleasing character that really does make it very pleasant to use. The throttle delivery is absolutely spot on and you've got a few different throttle maps as well to get it dialed to the specific scenario that you're riding in. But then also the way that they've balanced it means it's remarkably smooth in the lower revs. In fact, it almost feels as smooth as my triple cylinder Tiger 800 XCA, which I think is high praise indeed for a twin. Now there are some vibes though that creep in higher up the revs, so it might be a bit tingly at cruising and motorway speeds, but everywhere else, it's buttery smooth. On top of that, you've got loads of usable torque made right in the middle of the rev range. And so this bike feels like it's got plenty of grunt at road speeds and actually it's uh, surprisingly quick. And then combine that with a light slip assist clutch, a crisp gearbox with a really nice standard fit quick shifter. And it really is a very nice engine indeed. And I think probably the standout point of this bike. I should also say it's got a 20 litre fuel tank and decent fuel economy and so the total range is pretty much up there with the best in the class. As for the handling, well there are always going to be some limitations on a fairly tall bike with a big 21 inch front that's weighted slightly more towards off-road riding than some of the other middleweight adventure bikes on the market. But within these boundaries of what's possible with this sort of chassis setup, the V-Strom 800 does feel pretty nice through turns. You've got good quality suspension from Showa which feels quite controlled and it's especially impressive given the 220mm of travel at both ends. As for braking, while well, the hardware isn't exactly the most snazzy in this market segment with a pair of two-piston Nissan calipers up front on 310mm discs, but they do cope surprisingly well, especially considering the 230kg curb weight, which is a good 20-ish kilograms above average. So look, clearly if you're doing 99% of your riding on the road, then the more recently announced RE version of this bike will be a better choice with cast wheels, a smaller 19-inch front, and a lower slung stance that will hug the road a little better. But if you're doing a mix of on and off road, then this DE makes a decent choice and it's still plenty engaging on tarmac. This might be pretty much the perfect adventure bike riding position for me with that sort of commanding seat height of 855 mil and the big wide bars with loads of leverage. I'm 175 centimeters or five foot nine. And so around this like 850 millimeter mark is right in the sweet spot of still feeling like a big tall adventure bike, but without struggling too much to get a foot down when I come to a stop quickly. It's worth pointing out though, that there's no adjustability as standard with this seat. Like you get with some other adventure bikes where you've got two seat positions. Although there is the option to go 20 mil down with the low seat accessory and also 30 millimeters up for anyone who's on the taller side. And I think it's also worth pointing out that they're just over 100 quid each, which doesn't seem too bad for something that could really massively affect the comfort levels for different sizes of rider. But generally, the standard seat feels pretty comfy to me over distance. And given the smoothness that I just mentioned, I've really enjoyed some of the longer stints in the saddle. But there are, I think, a few things to look out for if you're considering this bike for doing longer sort of adventure tours. One would be I'd definitely recommend specking up the taller, wider windscreen that does come as standard on the RE version. And thankfully, 
that's an easy fix. The other two are a little bit more tricky though. I mean, one is the fact that you don't get cruise control, which feels like a real shame, especially given that this bike is a little more expensive than the competition. And so you would perhaps expect a few extra touches and features. On top of that, We've also got tube type rims and I got a stark reminder of how annoying it can be on the road when I got a puncture the other day about 20 miles from home and I couldn't just plug it quickly and get back on my way. Maybe you could take an option like doing a tubeless conversion or something like that. But like I say, if you're riding 99% on the road, then this is another strong case for the cast wheels of the V-Strom 800 RE. Onto the tech and with this bike you get a very nice TFT display which is simply laid out and easy to use and not particularly complicated but also at the same time I think they've done a nice job with the graphics so that it still has a bit of dynamism. You see you couldn't say the same for the Honda Transout for example which has a bit of the look of a clinical readout you'd see on a hospital machine. On top of that, you've got a nice feel to the switch gear, and again, it feels super intuitive, although there isn't particularly a great deal of features, and so you would hope it wouldn't become overcomplicated or confusing. The big one, perhaps, is that there's no phone connectivity, so you don't have the ability to control music and calls and messages through the switch gear and dash, and there's no navigation features built in either. And to be fair, these are features that we're starting to see on more and more bikes at lower price points. But look, I think it's the sort of thing that only matters to some riders, and so if you like to ride your bike to get away from your phone, then it's realistically going to be a non-issue. One thing that's a little bit unusual about this bike is the way that they've implemented the rider aids, which don't use preset modes that have the typical naming convention like road, rain and off-road. Actually, what you've got here is three different levels of power, three levels of traction control, plus a gravel mode and the ability to fully switch it off, and then also two levels of ABS, plus an off-road mode that cuts it off to the rear for the ability to slide it around. Each of these settings has to be configured manually, and so while it is a little bit more legwork for the thumbs to get it into the right combination for a given scenario, in a way, it's sort of reassuring to know exactly how the bike is set up because it's not obscured at all by the preset modes. Again, some people might like this, some people maybe not, but for me, it's one in the plus column. Now, another strength of this bike, I would say, and I think it's taken a little while to settle in, but it's the looks and the styling. You see, when it was launched back at Eichma in 2022, I believe, I don't think I immediately sort of loved it, and I think it's just because it was such a bold change from the V-Strom 650 that effectively preceded it with this new stacked headlight design and a much more angular look to the bodywork. But actually, now having been around it in the flesh for a while, I do think it looks really good. And the fact that it's quite tall and it's got the big front wheel does make it look quite aggressive and purposeful. I also really appreciate that they went quite bold with the front end, as opposed to the Transalp, for example, where they played it a bit too safe, I think. Then you've also got some really good color choices with the signature yellow and blue, which I think makes it immediately recognizable as one of the more recent V-Stroms. And also this gray and yellow version, which is distinctive and different to the other adventure bikes on the market. And I think it would be my pick of the bunch. There is also a version in black and sort of purpley blue, but still with a pop of gold on the fork and on the rims. For that slightly more stealthy, but also still a bit jazzy kind of vibe. I will say as well, the level of finish also feels really good, like it's a well-made machine. And so all round, for the styling and the details, I think it's a big tick for me. And it also looks especially good if you spec it up with the aluminium side cases and the top box, which I think is pretty much always the best looking configuration for an adventure bike like this. Price-wise, you're looking at £10,699 starting for this bike, and I think that contributes to what looks like quite a difficult sell on paper. It's about a grand more than the Transalp, for example, and a few hundred quid more than the KTM 790 Adventure. And yet, at the same time, this bike is quite a bit down on peak power, and also quite a bit up on weight. So look, I really think it's one of those bikes that you have to go and ride to find out if it's right for you, because some of the things I really liked about it like the throttle response, the smoothness of the engine, the riding position, the level of finish, the way it looks in the flesh, you know, they just can't be quantified on the Suzuki website in the specs section. The other bikes in this part of the market do offer stiff competition though, and you've also got to include the Tenere 700 and maybe even the Aprilia Touareg 660, and so really, you're 
spoilt for choice with good bikes, but there is still plenty to like about the V-Strom, and it does perhaps feel like the biggest and most planted of the bunch because of that extra weight. And so for me, it's certainly still worth sticking it on the shortlist and checking it out on a demo ride. As always, I'd love to know what you think of it, so do let us know down in the comments. And perhaps if you like the look of this bike, the general vibe, but maybe naked bikes are more your thing, then fortunately for you, I've already made a review of the GSX ATS built upon the same platform, so I'll put it here on the screen so you can give it a click, give it a watch, let me know what you think of it. Do remember that if you're new here and you want to see more reviews like this, then please do hit subscribe. Many thanks.